Launching in five, four, three, two, one. This is an Aerotech Black Max rocket motor, which produces thick black smoke. Sugar motors typically produce thick white smoke, but I'm going to attempt to develop a sugar motor that produces a similar thick black smoke. I did quite a bit of research on how composite motors make thick black smoke, and I did some experiments with doing similar things in sugar motors. I wasn't really successful, but I think it will be interesting to show what I tried. I'm certainly open to any suggestions, and I'd love to hear if anyone has been successful in generating black smoke from a sugar motor. The main method of generating black smoke in composite motors is to add an excess of fuel or other compounds that do not completely burn and leave plenty of carbon behind in the smoke, making it black. The first additive I read about was glitter. Now there's two types of glitter that I read about being used. One is mylar and one is PVC. Apparently the way to tell the difference is the PVC glitter will be marked non-toxic and the mylar glitter won't. So I grabbed some different kinds of glitter to try. So this first glitter I tried is marked non-toxic so it is presumably PVC glitter. And one of the problems I can see right away with it is it has a very large particle size so I wasn't too optimistic about it. Everything I read said that the particle size needed to be pretty small, but I went ahead with it anyway to just as an experiment to test it out. With all these, I added about 10% by weight of the additive. That way the experiments were consistent with each other, and that's about the percentage that I read that most people use to generate black smoke in composite motors. So I have some of this propellant that's already been mixed. That's left over from previous motors that I've made. So I'm going to weigh out 15 grams of propellant, and then I'm going to add one and a half grams of glitter, and we're going to melt that and mix everything together. And then we're going to cast it in this silicone gummy worm mold that I found that should make relatively good strips that we can test burn and see what the smoke coming off of them looks like. So we'll just fast forward and skip through the mixing and casting this mixture and I'll go on to the next and show you what we're going to do. So next I'm going to try some of this other glitter that's not marked non-toxic which may or may not mean it's mylar and immediately I can see that the particle size is much finer on this glitter than it was on the PVC glitter. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before and mix 15 grams of propellant with one and a half grams of of the glitter so we'll have a 10% ratio of our additional fuel with our original propellant and I was already a lot happier with this glitter because the particle size was much finer and when I mixed it in with the propellant it mixed in a lot easier and made a much smoother mixture that was much easier to cast in the little gummy worm molds the third and final thing we're going to try is just adding additional sugar, in this case sorbitol, to our mixture. Again, we're going to go with a 10% ratio, so 15 grams of our original propellant and an additional 1.5 grams of sorbitol. This way, since there will be extra fuel in the propellant, that will come out of the nozzle unburned and hopefully will be a source of carbon that is not combined with any oxygen and therefore will produce black smoke. Kind of like a diesel engine whenever it's revving real high and produces thick black smoke out the exhaust. This one was real easy to mix up. Since the sorbitol is the component that melts, it produced a very fluid mixture when it was melted, which was really easy to cast into the gummy worm molds. And then finally I just melted down all the rest of the extra propellant I had and cast that into gummy worms that we can burn as controls to see how they compare to the new formulas we're going to try. I also numbered the gummy worms on the mold with a sharpie and kept track on a sheet of paper of which formulas went into which gummy worm mold. So now we'll burn our different samples to see how they look as they burn. So we're going to start out by burning one of our baseline samples which is just the standard propellant without anything added to it. And I'm going to burn these just out in the open air here on this brick. So that'll be a little bit different than how they will burn inside the motor, but it'll still be a good comparison. So you can see that was a nice smooth burn with not a lot of residue left behind on the brick. Next we'll go ahead and burn the first sample we made, which is the non-toxic or PVC glitter. Uh, this was the one with the large particle size that didn't seem to mix very well. So 
So you can see that was not a smooth burn at all. It was flashing and popping and throwing material off. So uh, it did leave a, quite a bit of residue on the brick. And uh, we might hope that that residue on the brick would come out as dark smoke in our propellant exhaust. But that formula is just way too unstable to try in an actual motor. So the next propellant we're going to try is the one where we added the glitter that was not marked non-toxic, which may or may not be mylar. And remember this one, because of the small particle size, seemed to mix a lot better and seemed to be more homogeneous. So we'll see how it burns. So that one was not much better, arguably even worse. It didn't have as much sputtering, but the flame front really dug into the propellant and was not uniform at all. And the dislocations from all those particles allowed the flame to penetrate into the propellant so you did not get a uniform flame front on the propellant. And also note, both of these produce a lot of white smoke, so we don't have any dark smoke yet to speak of. And again, it would just be that soot that's left on the brick that we would hope would come out of the nozzle as black smoke. But again, this formula is way too unstable for me to try it in a real motor. So finally, we'll try the propellant that we made with just extra sorbitol. And in this one, remember, we just added 10% more sorbitol to the original formula. And so it was really nice to cast, really smooth, and flowed really well. So let's see how it burns. So that one burned nice and smooth, although much slower than the original propellant. So it's a little bit promising, but it's still a lot of white smoke, no black smoke. So I was a little disappointed, a little bummed. But there is a lot of soot there, which has the potential to come out as dark smoke, maybe. I am concerned about the slow burn rate, that we won't get very good performance. But right now I'm just looking for the black smoke. The performance can come later. We would probably want a smaller nozzle if we were going to actually use this propellant to boost the performance and speed it up a little bit. But perhaps against my better judgment, I'm going to go ahead and try this formula in a test motor in a rocket. So the first thing we're going to do to make our motor is start by making the propellant grains. I'm going to make a two grain rocket that's 38 millimeters in diameter, so about an inch and a half diameter, and each of the grains is about two and a quarter inches long. Just like the motor that's in my motor build series, except we're only making two grains instead of four, so it'll be about half the size motor. In order to get the right amount of propellant, I know we need about 150 grams. Each grain is about 70 grams, so that gives us about 150 grams total. And then just calculating the percentages of the different components, I can calculate the number of grams of each component we're going to need to make our formula and keep in mind we're adding 10% extra sorbitol to this mixture so now that that's calculated we'll go ahead and weigh out our components and mix them together and melt them down and cast our two grains so starting here with the KNO3 or potassium nitrate we're going to carefully weigh out 97 and a half gram which again is about 10% more than we would normally weigh out and pour that into our mixing container. And then we will zero out our scale and then we'll weigh out the sorbitol, which for this formula we're going for 67 and a half grams. So we'll pour that in with the potassium nitrate and put a lid on it and shake that together to mix it. Normally I'd put the red iron oxide in here as well at this point, but this time I decided to go ahead and mix the other two and melt them and I'll put the red iron oxide in later. And that'll illustrate one of the things I really like about red iron oxide that I'll talk about when we get there. So once we've shaken to our heart's content, we'll go ahead and pour the mixture into our skillet that we've preheated. So we'll just spread it out a little bit and give the sorbitol a chance to melt before we do too much mixing in the pan. And I go into a lot of more detail on 
mixing and casting propellant in my motor build series. The episode on mixing and casting the propellant, which I will link in the video and down in the description. So look for that if you're interested in more detail here. So once we get this mixture melted and well mixed, we're going to go ahead and weigh out our red iron oxide and add that. And you can see as I'm mixing in the red iron oxide, one of the things I really like about adding it, in addition to the fact that it catalyzes the burn, is that it really is a good indicator for when your propellant is well mixed. As I mix in the red iron oxide, you can see you get the streaking and you get areas that are more red and areas that are less red. And as you mix it, when you get that really uniform color, you can have confidence that your mixture is really well mixed. And that's not a huge deal, but it's something I do like about the red iron oxide and adding that in. So now that our propellant is ready to cast, we'll go ahead and get our casting tubes ready. Um, in this case, I'm just using some casting tubes that I made out of cardstock that I printed and then cut out. And so these are just made out of regular cardstock, and I printed a fill line on them so that I know how full to fill them so that once the core is inserted, they'll be at the right level because the core, you know, is going to displace some of the propellant and so you don't want to fill it all the way to the top before you put your core in and so that's what those lines are for inside of that so we'll just fill each of these to the fill line and for the first one i forgot to put my glove on my hand that i held the propellant with and and that propellant is pretty hot let me tell you so if it drips on you it's gonna leave a mark and you know it's pretty hard to hold on to the grain so you can see i have to hold it by the base there until I get that glove on, be real careful not to drip it on me. So definitely recommend wearing at least one glove while you fill these grains. And then put our cap on and put the core in. And we'll clean some of the propellant off the outside that drip. And we'll let those sit overnight. Alright, it's the next day and we're going to go ahead and prepare our motor grains for the motor. So we'll go ahead and take the cap and the base off and take the core out and clean up these propellant grains. They are a little bit under full, so they didn't come all the way to the top. I don't know if that is a result of the different formula having more shrinkage. That's what I suspect, but either way, it won't affect the motor performance too much. The extra surface area on the top might make it burn a little bit faster right at the beginning, but since this is going to be pretty underpowered anyway, I'm not worried about that. So we'll just go ahead and clean up the grains, get them ready to go in the motor, and then we'll start collecting the parts for our motor. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to speed through putting this motor together. We're just going to clean up the grains a little bit more and put them in the liner and then nozzle on one end, closure on the other, and steel washer goes on the nozzle end and our two snap rings. So again, my other videos have a lot more detail on how to put this motor together. So that's it. The motor's ready and we'll go ahead and launch it in our rocket. Going up in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, launch. So now if we compare our flight to the Black Max flight and to a typical K and SB flight, you can see that we really didn't make any progress toward a darker smoke. The smoke is just as white as the original K and SB. So I'm not sure what to conclude from this, if it's not possible to make black smoke with sugar motors or if I need to find a different approach. I'm wondering if maybe the sugar motors just don't produce enough heat to generate black smoke. They just don't get hot enough to separate the carbon from the other elements to create the black smoke or if something else is going on. If anybody has had any experience with this i'd appreciate any feedback you have or any experiments you've done i thought about not even posting this video because it wasn't a success but i think it's important to document experiments like this in case others want to try the same thing and can see what's already been done so you anyway, know hope that was valuable to you if you have any suggestions or thoughts or things you'd like me to try i'm all ears I'd be happy to try other things and i think it'd be really neat if we could make black smoke from sure motors either way i just want to thank you all for watching it's been a while since i posted a video i know i had a lot going on so i really want to post more videos so subscribe if you want to see more rocket content and i've got a bunch of videos on the way a bunch of ideas for videos so i'm going to try to do more videos more often so i'm looking forward to that so please subscribe thanks for all the subscribers and all of you that are taking time out of your day to watch my videos and i hope you all have a great day